Hello and welcome to Ask MNR, episode 311. The series where I answer your questions. If you have a question or topic for next week's episode, leave it in the comments section below. Hit the like button while you're there. We have no time to waste because Luffy says, Ryan, I noticed you deleted your Droidica and Padres diorama leak video. Might I ask why? And as soon as I read this, I said I did, like rhetorically, because I didn't. Rather, I went to my YouTube dashboard and I received a copyright strike, yet none of the pictures have watermarks. Uh, unfortunate. So yeah, now I have a copyright strike. That's awesome. Next question from Bly Production says, what is your least favorite Lego Star Wars clone set ever? And we are going to take away the modern era of clone sets. So 2020 and on, because I'm not talking about those. It has to be the Jedi and Clone Troopers Battle Pack from 2018. I hate the idea of having two Jedi in a battle pack when battle packs are for army building inherently. It just makes no sense. So yeah, that's probably my least favorite clone set. Although that's not really because of the clones or the clone ship in it. It's because of the other stuff that they threw in it that doesn't make sense for the given price point and idea behind the set. Crazy Dog 1750 says, what are your thoughts on the Lego Star Wars board game from like 2012? Would you like to see that concept make a return? So I do own one here, although these were never released in North America. Generally, the box art looks pretty neat. The idea behind it is pretty neat. It's really cool that we have these different micro characters that we would just never have otherwise although I think barely anyone knows about them or collects them or cares about them. They're there, they exist, whatever. And, you know, overall, whatever. Like, I don't really care about it. Like, I could have lived without it ever existing. It's just a neat part of LEGO Star Wars history to me. And as far as revisiting the concept, never, ever, ever should they revisit this concept. It makes zero sense to me. It would be taking up a slot for a set, for a build, for a character that we have just never had before. What, to get a lame board game that didn't even sell well enough to be released in North America? Like, that's crazy to me. I doubt they'll ever touch it again because clearly it didn't do very well to begin with. But um, yeah, I'll eventually review it. I just don't want to learn how to play it. I don't even understand. Like, it's just, I don't know. I guess you just roll a dice and you get to move up spots or you get forced back spots. I don't know. I'm not a big board game guy anymore, except for Monopoly. I'm a demon at Monopoly. Gag Dodger says, if you could go back as a designer and have one Lego Star Wars set have no stickers, which set would it be and why? I don't think we're going to have to go back that far to find a set that shouldn't have stickers for Lego Star Wars. And that would be the UCS Venator. We're talking about a $650 set and it has stickers. To be fair, the Razor Crest had stickers, but you know what? I noticed on the UCS Venator recently, and I it's only because of the, I said I bought more last week. I finally got one of them back built. The color base for the gray of the sticker is so far off from the color of the gray of the brick, and I couldn't remember for the life of me if it was like this on older sets like the Razor Crest. So I just looked and excused the poor lighting on the footage, but I think you can see on the UCS Razor Crest, the stickers felt a bit darker, but when it comes to the UCS Venator, the stickers are a good shade lighter or like a different bluish tone to the gray that they're trying to match for the gray of the UCS Venator. I mean, they've been doing stickers for decades. It, it makes no sense that on a $650 set, first off, that it couldn't just be printed, especially, you know, they claim there's some reason they can't print on little dimple. These are all prototypes for an upcoming thing on mnrshop.com, but I mean, you can clearly print within the dimple spot. But more importantly, let's say these pieces had to be stickers. You should just do the circular Republic logo as the sticker so that you don't have the terrible gray gray that's all around it that doesn't match the rest of the gray of the ship. And then for the stickers that are right above that, where it's just like the singular lines, those shouldn't be stickers. Those should be printed because they don't go over the dimple anyway, which is what they couldn't print on to begin with. Typically, if you've watched my reviews, I'm not a huge anti-sticker person. I don't talk about it a lot as this terrible bad thing that's the worst thing that happened to Lego because I don't think it is. But I do think in a case like the UCS Venator, it's probably one of the worst cases of it. You know, it's one of the things you can point to and be like, yeah, this is a good reason that stickers shouldn't exist for Lego sets and they should just do printed parts, especially for the higher end ones. It looks horrible. Anyway, next up from CT12510, he says, do you think Lego will make Tales of the Empire sets? And that trailer was a big surprise to me. The Tales of the Empire trailer was absolutely fire. Didn't know I needed that. Didn't know it was coming, obviously. But Thrawn, Grievous, Vader, the Grand Inquisitor. Oh my goodness. Having all of the really cool bad guys in one show is going to be amazing. I cannot wait for it. And I mean, they didn't make Tales of the Jedi sets. And they should have made Tales of the Jedi. I think they should make Tales of the Jedi sets more than they should make Tales of the Empire sets or a set. Like, I think a, a young Dooku versus Yaddle set, two characters we have never had, or two versions of characters, I guess, in Count Dooku's case that we have never had before, should exist more than 
anything from Tales of the Empire other than like the different version of Thrawn, but we know we're getting a Thrawn in June, so we'll at least have a Thrawn. We don't have a Dooku, we don't have a Yaddle, we have Vader, of course. I think the Inquisitor set just retired, but we recently had a Grand Inquisitor, and we also reasonably recently had a General Grievous in a set with the 2020 General Grievous' Starfighter that was on shelves for two years. So I think more than anything, there should be a Tales of the Jedi Yaddle versus Dooku set, just from the perspective of what characters we haven't had for the longest. But to answer the heart of your question, if, if I think they actually will make sets on Tales of the Empire, no, simply because they didn't make Tales of the Jedi sets. And as I just explained, I think Tales of the Jedi sets would have made even more sense than Tales of the Empire sets. We'll see what comes of the show because there could be some like really cool ship or vehicle that just makes sense at a certain price point. You know, like that's a thing too. But the Dooku Yaddle battle duel, whatever would make sense at that $20, $25 price point. They had been doing those lightsaber duel sets with like two Jedi or one Sith, one Jedi for quite a while. And so it makes no sense to me why they haven't made that particular set yet. So we'll see what comes of it, but I just, you know, don't expect anything. I'd like to interrupt your questions to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Whatnot. And when you look at all of these Lego Star Wars convention exclusives from over the years, it just so happens that Whatnot is hosting its very own and first Whatnot Con starting April 11th and running through April 14th. They want to bring the magic of comic cons to you on your phone exclusively on the Whatnot app. There's going to be over 1,400 exhibitors, including sellers, artists, celebrities, and studios like Marvel. You can see a partial list on your screen. Now, there's also going going to be over 20 exclusive items they'll have for sale over the course of Whatnot Con, of which you can see a few of on the screen now too. I'm going to be streaming on day one. That's Thursday, April 11th at 6 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to be auctioning all seven of the Star Wars convention exclusives starting at just $1 each. And at the end of the stream, which is only going to be about two hours, I got an extra Bestman duel to give away for free. You can get $10 free to shop Whatnot Con by downloading the app and signing up today using my link in the description below. I hope to see you during my Whatnot Con stream, and I hope you guys really Really enjoy the very first whatnot con back to questions clip says how do you feel about the new 2024 lego star wars updated encyclopedia sorry it's the visual dictionary updated edition stating that the design team pays attention to online product reviews and listens to what youtubers have to say about our sets well it was actually what I tried to go and look at as soon as I could. I always think it's really interesting to get some of the insight out of the back of these Lego Star Wars visual dictionaries and to get some like prototype images. Uh, I'll be doing a review on this book if it's not out already soon. So just keep your eyes peeled for that. I'll go through like all the pages and show you guys everything. Sometimes at the back, they have like prototype images. Unfortunately, this time it's just like reused prototype images and maybe like one good prototype image of Hugh Yang's head coming together with like different versions of the mold. But like there's no prototypes of like set builds and things like that. It's just like reused lame images. Like one of my favorite parts, this is my original one from 2009. I always loved that they showed like real lots of real actual behind the scenes here. Like the Sith Infiltrator prototype from 2007. You can just see how much different the build was. So many different prototype things or molds of characters, like a Tauntaun unmolded, just like a brick built Tauntaun and what that could have looked like, but it was never released. Prototype of the uh, Trade Federation shuttle, I suppose, but obviously they ended up calling it the Separatist shuttle. So a uh, prototype of Yavin 4 in this book. Like this was one of the coolest parts of that early Lego Star Wars book. So yeah, most of this stuff like about each set, secret, by the way, uh, a lot of it's reused from previous um, books. It'll be the same picture with the same little sp things talking about it, whatever. It's an e-web canon. Yeah, you know, so whatever. But there are newer sets. They update it, you know. It is what it is. But at the very end of the book, they have the little designer interview spots and, you know, I'm sure it's been read through by... Uh, a hundred people, you know, lawyers and such so that it's actually on the up and up versus the other stuff in the book, which will have errors just intermittently throughout. But they say the design team pays attention to online product reviews and listens to what YouTubers have to say about our sets. And I mean, that doesn't surprise me. Why would they not pay attention to online product reviews and be interested in what like big YouTube channels have to say about their sets? It more so surprises me that they would say it and very specifically say YouTube. You know, in the past, like in 2019, like like the statement like that is totally unsurprising to me because in this one, I remember this was before the 501st Battle Pack came out. So this one came out in 2019. And I remember like tweeting about this actually, let's see. Anyway, they said the team are actively involved in the Lego Star Wars fan community and are able to understand firsthand what the fans want. And of course that was, like I said, before the 501st Battle Pack. So I was like, well, they better be involved so that they know people want a 501st Battle Pack.
pack. And of course, eventually we got a file first battle pack the next year. But you know, what's interesting about that is they say they're invo actively involved in the community. And I'll say this again. I, I, so, I don't, I didn't read everything in the back of that new book yet. So I don't know if they still say they're actively involved, but they certainly are not actively involved, like communicating with anyone. I've never seen them just go out and talk to fans like online at, at all anywhere, like ever. I shouldn't say like ever, because technically maybe in the like early 2010s, there were some forums maybe that I remember. I can't remember if he was a designer at the time or not. Hans, the guy that designed the UCS Slave one, he would be on like Eurobricks and he would talk to fans. So he was actively involved. That's what I would define as active. Watching from the shadows, I wouldn't call active. The point is they called out that they like to hear what YouTubers have to say about their sets. I guess what's very important about that is who they're actually listening to and what feedback they're taking in. Like it's important to listen to feedback of stuff that is bad. Like if the 212 helmet sucks and it does, you should be listening to that and you should be actively fixing that, not like I had a fan message me and tell me that they met one of these designers at uh, Star Wars Celebration last year. It was the it was the minifigure guy. And he said that the minifigure guy told him that there was nothing wrong with the 212 helmet. I, I guess I have no way to corroborate or prove that story is true. But that is what someone told me and I have no reason to believe they were lying to me. If they actually listen to people that care about the product being better, then we will end up getting a better product. And that's literally all that matters. So hopefully that's what's happening. We don't know that. We can never know that because they would never talk about that. Next question from Rob says, any truth to the rumors about Jedi Bob and the Black Falcon being fake? No, no truth at all. So I'm put a post up titled, please help. And they said, I don't have much time left. I got a cease and desist in the mail and they threatened legal action. The Dark Falcon and Jedi Bob Starfighter were fake, meant to find out who had been leaking them. I can no longer post any leaks or else I might be sued. Farewell, my friends, and may the force be with you. I mean, clearly not a real Reddit post, right? Or like a real person with an actual interest in like telling you the truth. Like like who the heck writes something like that? Just no chance that's real. Um, so yeah, the Jedi Bob Starfighter and Dark Side Millennium Falcon are still supposedly coming out this year. There are rumors, of course, at the end of the day. Um, but like if you got a season assist, it, really the first thing you're gonna do is run to Reddit to like tell people you got the season. And Lego would know who, like, <laughs> right? I guess it's wild to me. Also, also, if you were Lego and you were gonna make fake rumors to try to weed out, you know, someone that's leaking, why would you, like, like people already think the Jedi Bob Starfighter and Dark Side Millennium Falcon are fake just because they seem so outlandish. Why would you make them so outlandish? Because then people would be like, well, why would I tell anyone this? Because it's clearly going to be a fake rumor. You know, you would, you would make a rumor like, let's say this year a TIE Fighter and X-Wing are coming out, which apparently they are. Hey, there's a Y-Wing also coming out this year. And then when you find out, you know, there's a rumor of a Y-Wing, well, then you, you've got your source, right? It's that simple because no one bats an eye to a Y-Wing rumor, but you bat an eye, understandably, because of Lego Star Wars' history, to a Jedi Bob Starfighter rumor or to a uh, Dark Side Millennium Falcon rumor, which hopefully will be a really cool set. But yeah, um, yeah, th those rumors are still on the table for the summer of 2024. I'll have a big update video soon uh, for all the rumors, probably right after May 1st. Angelo, adding on to our Mercari topic from last week, Mercari went to zero seller fee but gave buyers the fee. But he says that Mercari also allows people to return products for any reason now. So sell, I think he means sellers can now get scammed by people opening items and returning them after they've been used. So yeah, unfortunately it does seem like Mercari will be very anti-seller potentially. Like you could literally sell someone something, you could have the money, give it to your bank account, whatever. And then they're going to get a refund two weeks later because they're going to send their item back. Like it seems completely ridiculous. Although to be fair, if they are spending the money for the extra fee, they should be protected versus if you're the seller and you're not paying a fee, well, then you're not paying anything to be protected. Look, I don't think that's the way it should work, but I'm just reasoning through it. Like you technically aren't paying for insurance essentially is, is what part of that fee is. So I don't know. They should be taking care of everyone at the end of the day. But yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate that that's how it's happening. Lastly, from Tyler, we have a big rumor update for the UCS Jabba's sale barge. He says we will have 10 minifigures, which are going to be Slave Leia, Max Rebo, Salacious Crumb, Jabba, the Hut, and more. He wants to know if they would closely resemble the 2012-13 versions of the figures or if there's any significant room for improvement on these figures. Also, do you think they will affect the value figures like Slave Leia and Max Rebo? I've covered this quite a bit with like whether values of figures are 
affected. Generally, logically, the value of something should go down because there's going to be more supply of that thing in the market. It can definitely vary. There are cases like Cloud City Boba Fett where they have made plenty of nice Boba Fetts afterwards, plenty of Boba Fetts that are far better and more accurate than Cloud City Boba Fett. But there's some charm about that Cloud City Boba Fett that continues to drive its value up. So unless that happens to be the case for one of these Slave Leia Max Rebo figures, there's no reason that their price should theoretically go up. It should only go down or at least stabilize. But I honestly don't really care much about all of that. Uh, I do care about the quality of the figures here in the set though. And you asked if there's any significant room for improvement on these. A lot of these figures that they did originally release were very good. The Last Slave Leia, the Lax Max, Max Rebo, Salacious Chrome, of course, fantastic figures. I did get another question this week, actually. Someone asked if Jabba the Hutt would have pupils. And I hate that that is a question. I do, of course, expect the figures to be good like I always do, but the, the unfortunate reality that we have found ourselves in is that Lego Star Wars figures, in some cases, not all, but certainly in some, unlike in, you know, if you go back 10 years, it wasn't the case, uh, but some of them have peaked and they will be worse. And that is a hard thing to grapple as a longtime fan that like things are actually noticeably getting worse. Slave Leia could be an example. Her 2013 version was very, very good. So we'll see. Max Rebo, I don't know how you would make him worse. I'm pretty sure it's just a blue body, blue legs, and the blue head that has a little bit of printing. It's probably going to be the exact same thing with like maybe a small difference. I don't know. Salacious Crumb, kind of same deal. It's just a mold with a print. How could you mess it up? I don't know. I wouldn't expect any of the sail barge figures to be too majorly different than what we saw in the past. And by the way, the 10 figures in that set, pretty good count. Pretty happy with that. It's like the UCS ATAT -AT, essentially. And that set is supposed to be $500, by the way. So start saving now. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy this week's episode, hit the like button. If you have a question or topic for next week's episode, uh, leave in the comment section below. I almost said hit the like button again. So see you next time. Bye.